it, if it wasn't corona, honestly, it would have been something else. I mean, this is pretty bad. By definition, corrections are only, they only feel natural, normal, and healthy until you're actually in one. And by definition, what makes people sell to the degree that they did was there's too much enthusiasm going into the peak. I mean, the way that the stocks were, the stock market was acting in the mega cap stocks was just kind of, you know, bonkers, which is a technical term. So on January 20th, we just felt like there was going to be a 5 to 10 percent correction concentrated on the biggest names. And then, of course, the coronavirus hit that next week, which brings into play that there is a fundamental dynamic that could weaken the global economy. So you expected a 5 to 10 percent correction. That, that's sort of what we've gotten already in just like four days. Yeah. So what now? Sarah, it's really interesting. So there's three reasons that we think that you're making a temporary low. Uh, we call it a whoosh low, another technical term. Um, so you, what you get is the human nature starts to fear that Bernie Sanders is going to become the president and that everybody is going to have coronavirus. I, I had a cough on a plane going from New York to Boston, and you would have thought that I had a hazmat suit on or I needed one. So everybody is scared. That creates the kind of thumping that we've had. The last time you saw that kind of thumping was... August of 2015, and, and a two-day thumping of 6%. August of 2015, and then again in February of 2018. Following both of those occurrences, you got, after that, that whoosh, you got a pretty nice pop over the next few weeks. And then the reality of that fundamental deterioration that brings in soft data brings you back to the low. That's when you want to be a buyer, because that's when you really start to engage expectations for monetary stimulus. And I think it's going to, that, that is going to be so extraordinary because this is such a global fear-based and really truly a business shutdown. Hey, Tony, it's Josh Brown. Um, nobody I'd rather hey, hear from today than you. Thanks, uh, buddy. So, so I, wanted to, I wanted to throw this at you. I feel very much like we're torn between two things and it's really tough to get really, really excited about a face-ripping rally or to get really, really scared at this moment in time. And here's why. Real quick here on the internals. Two weeks ago, 25% of the S&P 500 had a 14-day RSI above 70 or overbought. Yep. Now it's 0.5% of the S&P. There yep. are no overbought stocks. Um, the other thing is 90% uh, of stocks right now in the S&P are at 10-day lows. If you go back and look through history, that's the lowest it ever gets. You don't Correct. get to 95% of S&P. So we are as overdue for a bounce purely based on individual stock action in the S&P as I've ever seen us. However, we're still above the 200-day. Yeah. So you can't exactly say that we've seen the worst because we clearly have not. So what am I to make of the internals versus the technicals? Which side, which side, you know, which camp do you fall on here? Well, what we, Josh, it's a great point. And that's why. So this morning, our, the title of our note was, you know, post whoosh, pop and then flop. You get this oversold bounce, but it gets faded because not everybody got a chance in two days to sell out. The intermediate term indicators, the short term ones are ridiculously oversold, as I outlined before. But the intermediate yep. term indicators are still at best neutral. What gets them to a position that creates your next sustainable leg higher is you get oversold. That takes a little bit of time. That takes a rally off of this temporary low that we have, and then everybody gets really scared when you test that low because the fundamental data is getting worse, and that's when the monetary stimulus makes you want to look through it and buy into that. And if you don't believe it, Josh, you've been doing this a long time very well. We both know. Nobody wants understand. to buy that test. What does, 20, what does 25 basis points do to counter a global recession driven by economies being shut down from Japan to China well, to Europe to possibly I don't think it's going to be 25 States. basis points. I don't think it's going to be 25 50, basis 50? points. They're freaking out because inflation can't get above 1.6 percent before anything shut down with a global virus. That was when you had the trade barriers getting fixed. They're freaking out that inflation's too low and they can't fix it. They're going to throw everything at the market that they can to not become Europe. And the reason that's important is that there's so much fixed rate long-term debt in the U.S. that can be refied as it goes lower. That is different than overseas, most of the overseas countries. That's why the U.S., for, since I've been in this business of 35 years, every time I hear the Fed is pushing on a string, and it's not because I have too much debt, and if you lower the interest rate enough, I will refinance that debt and take some equity out of my house.
All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks, Tony. And please, soap and Thanks, water guys. every chance you get. <laughs> Thanks, John.